Good day and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is the video that I've been preparing for for uh, a couple of weeks. And this is the For Patriotism solo. And as you can see, I'm already in the final wave. So I'm actually going to record this full video. Um, maybe I won't be able to record the full thing. I don't know about the constraints on the memory. So this recording can cut out at any time. I'm just playing it very safe because two or three, if two elites come within my range, I warp away immediately. And I'm keeping about a 35k radius on any enemy so I can fire at a safe distance and take them out. So far I've taken out, I think, three in this final wave. I'm not sure if this is the final wave because the mission is slightly different. I have stations in the sector where I'm located, which I didn't have the last time. I also have... Um, the enemy is behaving very, very passively compared to last time. I'm not sure what is going on here. But the reward has also been reduced uh, considerably. Okay. So now for the next thing to note when it comes to what I'm going to be doing here. So what I actually did was I set up all my gear at one of the stations in the sector. And I'm actually looking at my encounters non-stop while I'm playing. If any elite breaks the 40 kilometer mark, I watch it. If it breaks the 30 kilometer mark, I switch my targeting to the elite and I take it on immediately. May not be the best idea, but taking out an elite while there's only one near you might be the best solution for uh, playing against this heavy encounter. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry about that. I ended up warping right into the fight. Now, you see, this is the trick that I'm doing. I'm doing the warp in, warp out, warp in, warp out. You could actually do this here a lot easier by viewing the overview of your system where you're in and knowing where each location is. That way there you can make a better uh, jumping map. Now, I chose to go to the closest station, and now I'm going to do a 100k out uh, jump in because I already know that they're closer than they should be. Now, I'm not running a shield regen right now because I'm worried about the warp stabilize, uh, about the warp disruptors. Instead, I'm running a damage controller. Now, the reason why I'm running a damage controller is I noticed that the elites just eat through my shield the moment they get a uh, hold of me. So, I am actually going to be using the damage controller to take on more damage. It means that I'm going to be able to get away with taking a beating. And in the station where I just docked, I have all my spare gear ready. I even have gear all the way down to um, torpedo launches in case I can't get any distance on the enemies. So let's go back in. Okay, so as I said, this is the solo runs. And I am using the strategy of jumping in at various distances. So the reason why jumping in at various distances is so good is when you jump in at different distances and kite the enemy down further and further, it allows you to gain the upper hand on jumping away. Now, I also have another option here. Instead of going back to the station, I can jump to the nearest gate. Now, is that going to help me much? Yes, it is. If I go and I change my trajectory, the enemies will all be in a different angle when I get back in from warping to and from. Now, let's see how far out I am. Okay, this is perfect for me. But there's two elites very close. Generally, they back off and then they come back in. Nope, this isn't the way I want it to go. There's it. The, the elites are backing off. I don't know why they back off so quickly, but it's actually good for me. If I can get rid of all the smaller enemies and have them keep their distance at 40 to 50 out, or just have one of them come in at a time, I can actually take them all down very easily. And as you can see, I'm actually doing quite well in this final leg of the encounter so far. And 
I actually started this encounter at 12 o'clock my time. Right now it's 2.30. Most of the time I spent jumping around because the warp distances, as explained previously, are ridiculous. It seriously is a pain in the ass. You sit so long waiting for the the ship to arrive in a sector that you can actually do a whole other mission in that time. I'm just watching the elites carefully. If I see them jumping closer and closer, that means that I need to get out of here. Because the moment an elite comes too close, it means I have to fight that elite. And the elite will close the distance on me, even if I am running my uh, afterburner. But most of the other enemies can't close the distance, no matter how hard they try. And it looks like one is coming in. Yeah. There's it. I've got one coming in. It's not coming in with the second I'm gonna take it on the moment it reaches 30 k's so this is my strategy on taking on these uh, heavy encounters oh oh no here comes trouble second one's also encroaching in dropping into the 40 k mark And I'm out. Two elites too close. I don't want to get uh, warp disrupted. So as you saw, I'm, I'm running a warp stabilizer. I can handle one tank to block me, but I can't handle two. Because the warp stabilizer I'm running is a standard. I didn't buy the elite version. Only reason why I didn't buy the elite version is I didn't see the point in running a defensive against two. I never intend to take on two at a time, so now I need to find another location in the system to jump to. Let's see. Okay. This seems ridiculously far, so I'm just going to warp straight to. And then I'm going to warp into the encounter from a different angle. Now the reason for this is, even though that area where I was had those enemies, there's still a chance for me to get a hold of the other non-elites on the other side. There are 10 elites in this entire encounter. And I know there are two destroyers and I know there are two uh, cruise ships so far. But I haven't seen the rest of the ships. There's also uh, battle cruisers in this mission. And I have no idea on what number they make up in the entire fight. Uh, what number of enemies they make up in this entire fight. And as you saw... They have a unique running um, AI. They run into the entire mass of enemies. That means if you don't wipe out one by one on the outer rim, you're going to end up getting pulled in with one of them into the middle of a massive fight. And you don't want to do that there because they're basically trying to kite you. So let's see if this changes my location. And yes, it did. Oh no, this isn't good. As I said, I don't have a uh, shield regen on this ship at the moment. So I can't really take on the close range like this. So I need to keep my distance. And the moment that I'm taking on the close range, I'm obviously going to swap out the damage controller. No, I'm not going to swap out the damage controller. I'm actually going to swap out the afterburner for the shield regen so that I can last a little bit longer in the fight. And when I say last a little bit longer, I mean like two seconds so I can get out of there. I have no intention of letting any of those elites break the 20 kilometer 
distance because the debuffs on enemies are ridiculous. An- another fault that I can give in the game, which I've noticed recently, is the NOS energy drain can drain my energy from up to 30k's out, while I need to be 8k's away to actually engage a NOS energy drain and actually affect the enemy. It's not a fair thing to be going on in the game, considering the fact that a lot of us are playing with this um, standard matter in the game, and they really need to work on it because you can't have players all running into the exact same problem non-stop. I'm actually going back into the exact same uh, location that I was in, but I am going to change my warp-in distance to 100. And the reason for that is 10 plus 100, uh, uh, the 10 kilometers at 80 plus the 20 from 100 should give me that distance to be outside of the regular target range. And as you saw, there were 15 enemies left. That means if I play it right, I can get rid of all of the regulars and take out the elites in the next few minutes. Now, this video might be way longer than normal. I might actually reach a 30 minute mark on this video. That's because... Uh, someone asked for actual footage of how I do this. So I'm actually going to do it right through to the end. Okay. If possible, if the video cuts out in the middle, that's because I ran out of space for recording. You'll actually notice it the moment that I ran out of space because my phone will uh, give a error message. And then I'll immediately cut the recording and I'll also dock and upload the video. So anyway, the, the other things with this mission that you should know. Like you can see that I'm keeping an eye on the elites. And I have been kiting them in one direction non-stop in this entire encounter. Now I actually have to view my stargates, the stations, and look for one that isn't on that same trajectory. The stargates are, def uh, are definitely in different areas. These two are close together and these two are on the opposite end. I might actually use one of them as my getaway point. Now when it comes to other strategies in this, there's running around with your naval class Vexer, which would be just as safe as running around with my trainer. Okay, I'm lying. If you make one, one slip up and you end up directly in front of the elite uh, fleet and there's three or four of them, like it could happen to me even right now, even though I'm feeling so confident. If it happens, I'm finished. They will take me out in a matter of minutes, regardless of how well prepared I am at the moment. So basically right now I'm just gambling ar along at the edge of the map. And are the elites moving in? If I can get one on one, I can definitely beat an elite. That elite is moving in slowly. Yeah, yeah, there's it. I have a possible encounter with an elite earlier than I expected. I've reduced it down to 13 by the time I took on my first elite by the looks of it. Obviously, I'm going to be engaging my uh, thruster and trying to keep distance on this fight as it erupts right now. Because the moment they catch me, I am finished. And as you're going to watch... I'm going to use almost maximum distance. 37 is actually usable for me. I have a 38 kilometer radius on my weapons. And this is going to be quite a difficult fight. We're both closing distance. And I need to get ready to warp away. Yeah, still closing me.
some elite regen shield, some uh, regen armor. Now, I would have preferred to take on the Kamora over this elite. And as you can see, there's another elite closing in. I'm actually keeping an eye on that. As I said, I'm more worried about the elites than any other ship when it comes to combat right now. Okay, and I already know who's my next target going to be if things go my way. So it looks like I'm going to be taking on elite after elite in this fight. And if you take them on in the right manner, you can get away very easily from their fire the moment they come in range. Only one or two vessels have the massive range that can actually take you out. So if you're playing smart, you can keep that distance and be as safe as you need to be. So overall, you've seen the basics of how I'm playing this. This is my strategy on taking them on. Some others may have a little bit more aggressive of a strategy using the energy drain or using a shield. What was it? There, there was a... I'm not sure if it's a weapon or a mid slot uh, device that can steal the shield from an enemy. I'm not sure if I read it correctly. It might be wrong. But I know someone said they used that against these elites and it worked out fantastic for them. And just thinking about it, if you can get that type of um, a slot device on your ship and run it against an elite, you can get through this fight even easier than I am. There's it, the elite is breaking away. It means that they don't want to keep engaging me. And I'm also looking at my distances. If everything starts to close in less than 40, I can jump away because they need 20 to uh, block me. And even if they try to block me, they need two to stop me because I'm running a warp disruptor. Um, a warp stabilizer. So when one hits me, it will destabilize one. And I can immediately warp away. As easy as one, two, three. So overall, this is going to be boring, just like every other fight. And I don't know why it's in a sector with the station. I expected it to be in a sector without a station. That's how come I had more gear saved up. I even had armor and... Uh, shield regens ready. I had warp stabilizers. I had two of them. Uh, the damage controller. I had a lot of equipment ready for this. And it took me by surprise the way that the uh, fight erupted here. It should have been a little bit more difficult to say the least. And it's playing out very simple for me at the moment. I'm actually managing to keep my distance and hitting this ship regularly. By the looks of it it's going to go down in no time.